Welcome to ETH, news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. Here at End Time Headlines, our mission is to inform our listeners of the times and seasons in which we are in. In Luke 21, 28, we are told when you begin to see all these things come to pass, lift up your heads, your redemption is drawing near. And now, founder and pastor of End Time Headlines, Ricky Scapero. We want to welcome everybody here today. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you're joining me from. It's always good to hear where you guys are, jo are joining me from and your location. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, before we get into this thing, the nature of what I'm about to talk about today uh, is very serious uh, and I'm gonna when you get into the when we get into this thing, you're gonna see why. I'm about to show you some stuff. If you've not seen this, it's gonna blow you out of the water. Uh, it's the fear of the Lord will hit your spirit, and I'm gonna prove to you that we really need to be in heavy intercession and prayer, specifically for the United States of America for the next two to three months. And I'm gonna prove that to you in just a second. So uh, I wanna welcome all of our viewing audience today by Facebook and by YouTube. Again, thank you for jumping on here. I am the founder and pastor of End Time Headlines, Ricky Scaparo, and we're gonna be talking about a, we're doing a prophetic update today regarding two events, one that is taking place and one that is yet to take place. So here we go today. Today, I'm going to get you up to date on the super volcano of uh, Wyoming, uh, the Yellowstone super volcano and the coming solar eclipse. So buckle up guys, because we're going to take you on a little journey here that's going to be very intriguing. First of all, the latest updates, if you're not yet aware of this, the earthquake swarm that has been ongoing now that has been affecting the western edge of Yellowstone National Park has included more. Now there has been the, the latest reports is over 460 earthquakes thus far. So this is an earthquake swarm that's taking place again at the Yellowstone National Park. The University of Utah, who has seismograph stations that monitor the park's quake activity, has reported that on Monday night, there has been at least 464 earthquakes that have been recorded since June 12th, guys, June 12th, uh, including a magnitude 4.4 earthquake near West Yellowstone on the 15th of June, which was the largest of the swarm as of to date, the swarm has also consisted of five earthquakes of the magnitude three range, 57 quakes in the magnitude two range, and 238 in the magnitude one range, uh, 157 in the magnitude zero range, and six weaker quakes. The quakes have ranged in depth from zero to nine miles relative uh, sea level. In total, 115 people reported to the U.S. Geological Survey or the USGS that they felt the June 15th earthquake near West Yellowstone. Again, the June 15th quake was a magnitude 4.4. Now, uh, let me give you a little bit of uh, facts here. According to, now this is from LiveScience.com, most of Yellowstone National Park sets inside three overlapping uh, calderas. The shallow bowl-shaped depressions formed when an underground magma chamber erupted at Yellowstone. Each time, so much material spewed out of the ground, causing a collapse downward, creating these calderas. The massive blast, now again, I, I, now, I, don't, I don't want to get into this whole young earth, old earth theory, because especially when a pre predominant audience that we're having here listen today are Christians or born again believers, and there's this huge rift of old earth, new age uh, theories of how old the earth actually is. But again, I'm only giving you the facts of what I've got before me. But LiveScience.com uh, has said that the massive blast struck somewhere between 2.1 million to 1.3 million, and some say 640,000 years ago. So again, if you don't believe the earth is that old, so you, you, you can put that in regardless. Here's the bottom line, guys. There is evidence that somewhere in the past on the earth, 
there was a previous eruption of this super volcano in Wyoming. These past eruptions serve as clues to understanding what would happen if there was yet another Yellowstone mega explosion. Now let's talk about that. So you say, well, Brother Ricky, are we about to see another eruption of a super volcano? I don't know. I'm not a seismologist. I'm not a scientist. And I don't have an expertise uh, in this area. What I'm trying to tell you today is that it's interesting that we are seeing a seismic swarm of earthquakes that are taking place where there is a super volcano that has erupted in times past. And let me just show, throw this out there. According to, again, LiveScience.com, if a future super eruption resembles its predecessors, then the flowing lava would not be the threat. The older Yellowstone lava flows near uh, never traveled much farther than the park boundaries, according to the USGS. For volcan volcanologists, I'm sorry, the biggest worry, here it is, is wind-flung ash, uh, and, a, and, a, and, and here's what they say, quote, imagine a circle about 500 miles or 800 kilometers approximately across surrounding Yellowstone. Guys, you're watching by YouTube, will be able to see this, uh, this illustration, which we're talking about today. But again, imagine where Yellowstone is, or where we'll say, well, ground zero is, okay, uh, there would be a 500 mile radius or approximately 800 kilometers that would be affected from the ash that would be generated from this volcanic eruption. Across surrounding Yellowstone, studies suggest the region inside this circle might see anywhere between four inches minimum or 10 centimeters of ash upon the ground. And scientists reported uh, on August 27th of 2014 in the Journal of Geochemistry, Geophysics, and Geosystems that the ash would be devastating to the United States, according to sciences. The fallout would include short-term destruction of Midwest agriculture and rivers and streams would be filled with this ash and pollutions that would come from the volcanic eruption. So again, we're talking about just total devastation, guys, from a super volcanic eruption of this uh, super volcano in Yellowstone. People living in the Pacific Northwest might also be affected by the Yellowstone's fallout. Quote, people who live upwind from eruptions need to be concerned about the big ones, said Larry Mastin, a USGS volcanologist and lead author of the 2014 Ash Study. Uh, big eruptions often spawn giant umbrella clouds that push ash upwind. This is what we're talking about here. Across half the continent of the United States. And then according, again, this is from this volcanologist. These clouds get their name because the broad, flat cloud hovering over the volcano resembles an umbrella. And an Quote, an umbrella cloud fundamentally changes how ash is distributed, but California and Florida, which grow most of the country's fruits and vegetables, would see a dusting of the ash. So even as far south, guys, of Florida would see a dusting, and even as far west as California would see a dusting. But again, all in that proximity of uh, from Wyoming, and again, we're, we're talking a 500 mile radius or 800 kilometers would see at least four inches of ash on the ground that would absolutely cause devastation that most of us in my generation, your generation, has never seen. Now, many of you guys, now I was just a young boy when Mount St. Helens erupted. Uh, and some of you all uh, were much older than me when that happened, and we remember the devastation from that. So let me give you some verses of Scripture that I think is very interesting uh, that I believe very well could allude to volcanic eruptions taking place in the future, okay? Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. Now listen what the, uh, John the Revelator says. He says, quote, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, 
Now, are we, am I saying that we're in the seals now? No. Am I saying we're in the tribulation? No. But what I am saying is that if we're this close to the coming of the Lord and things in the future taking place, guys, again, I've got to show you this as a point of reference where the word of God, because we always want to get you back to the word. That's where we're doing today. We want to get you to the word of God. Revelation 6, 12, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake. And again, in the Greek, great is megos or where we get the term a mega quake. There was a great earthquake and watch this. And the sun became black and as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. Now watch, there was a great earthquake and as a result, something happened and caused the sun to become black as sackcloth of hair and the moon to look as, as, as though it turned to blood. Again, this is no doubt, this could very well allude to a an earthquake that triggers a volcanic eruption and the sun becomes black from the ash and the smoke and the moon through the lens of looking at the moon through the to the clouds of the, this volcanic uh, ash and clouds, it looks as though it's blood. I mean, people that study these volcanoes, they will, they will absolutely tell you that when you look at the sun or look at the moon, if it's night, when there's a volcanic eruption, it will look as black as sackcloth of hair in the day as the sun, and the moon will look as though it was blood. But again, there's another parallel or there's another uh, perspective to the sun being as black as sackcloth hair and the moon turning to blood that we're going to talk about in just a second when we get to uh, the solar eclipse that I'm going to talk about in just a second. Now let's go again. Revelation chapter 8 verse 5. Listen to this. And then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar and threw it to the earth. And there was noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Now again, what was there? noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Can I tell you that all four of these things are, uh, are, are prominent and they are, they're seen and witnessed during a volcanic eruption? Again, I could show you pictures and we'll probably put this up on our YouTube so you guys can see this. There's been volcanic eruptions where there's been, obviously there's noise present, there's actual lightning and thundering, and there's an earthquake uh, that many times will happen prior to the eruption of the volcano. So, verse 6, Revelation 8, so the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to the sound. The first angel sounded and hail and fire followed mingled with blood and they were thrown to the earth and a third of the trees were burned up and all the green grass was burned up. Now you do know uh, that there's been archaeological studies uh, that trace all the way back to the time of Sodom and Gomorrah when the Bible says that God rained fire and brimstone out of heaven and destroyed the cities of the plains. They, they will tell you that the judgment of God that was used to destroy the cities of the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah was a volcanic eruption. Thus, the author, when he began to describe what he saw, he said there was fire and brimstone that fell out of heaven. And again, this is why they will even tell you that Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt because there's traces of volcanic residue that's left from the eruption that took place all the way back when. So again, and if you go to the book of Ezekiel, consequently, Ezekiel chapter 38, Ezekiel chapter 39, there's the war of Gog and Magog, uh, which is a future war. And there, it even mentions there of what it looks to be a great earthquake and a volcanic eruption. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about, first of all, I want to get this across. I, I, you say, well, Brother Ricky, are you saying that this volcano of, of Yellowstone is going to erupt and fulfill Revelation 6 and 8? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm trying to tell you is 
that I am trying to get you aware of the times and seasons in which we're in and we're giving you news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. We're trying to show you how it's possible for events like a Yellowstone eruption to absolutely coincide with what the authors have written for thousands of years from John the Revelator to Ezekiel the prophet to Zechariah and many other ones such as Joel. Let's go to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Very familiar passage. Joel 28. 228. And it shall come to pass. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams. Young men shall see visions. And upon my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Now watch this. And I will show wonders in the heavens. Heavens. We're going to talk about that in a second. And in the earth. Blood, fire, pillars of smoke. Now again, in the natural. What does blood, fire, and pillars of smoke represent again absolutely can represent a volcanic eruption and then he goes on and says the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into the bl in blood now didn't that just parallel with what john the revelator just talked about and he says before the coming of the great and awesome day of the lord so again guys this is very intriguing to me so we need to keep our eyes on, you know, I, I, t I spoke to someone today by text and I said, are you aware of, and I'm not going to name who it was, but it's an individual who teaches Bible prophecy and I spoke to them. I said, I know you're probably aware of what's going on at Yellowstone and I just kind of wanted to pick his brain and we both agreed that it would be absolutely devastating if this thing does indeed begin to reawaken and be and erupt again friends i'm telling you it will it will cause catastrophic damage to the united states of america i know the news is not talking about this because again it's all about bashing trump trying to get trump impeached and this and that so the news is not telling you this stuff and if you would guys please share this with people that i believe that will be intrigued by this now and i haven't even got to the heavy stuff yet all right so we dealt with Yellowstone. Now let's shift gears. And I want to show you. Now, consequently enough, we just entered into, today I believe was the first day of summer. We've entered into, into the season of summer on, uh, on the Gregorian calendar or the Western calendar. We've entered into the first day of summer. Again, today is June 21st, 2017. We've entered into the first day of summer. Okay, now we've got this situation going on with Yellowstone, consequently enough, two months to the date, August 21st, I want you, if you've not yet circled this on your calendar, put this on your tablet, put this on your iPhone, put this on your Android, whatever you got to do, circle this date, August 21st, 2017, again, two months from today, there's coming a solar eclipse that's very important that you and I now listen, all, I, I know we've got people that are watching this internationally outside the United States, but today I want to talk to everyone. Listen to me. If you live in the United States of America, you need to be paying attention to what I'm about to show you because I'm going to prove to you that we got to be, we have, for the next two months, we're going to need to be in heavy intercession and prayer because things could get real topsy and turvy, turvy or whatever, however that phrase is. I know I just slaughtered that, but things can get real uh, turbulent. I like that phrase. So this is why I said buckle up earlier. Now you say, why is this important? On August 21st, something is going to take place in the United States of America that has not happened since 1918. Do you hear that? Something is going to take place in the United States on August 21st, two months from today, that has not happened since 1918. On that day, a total solar eclipse was visible all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast. Now, again, when is this? August 21st, 2017. Seven years from then will put us to 2024. 
And incredibly, there will be another rare solar eclipse that will move the opposite end of the United States, okay? So I want to make sure we're paying attention. You've got to get all this in your heart, in your spirit, in your mind today because when, when I end this thing, it's going to blow you away and you're going to see what I'm talking about. Again, August 21st from East Coast to West Coast, there will be a line that will shoot all the way across the United States that has not happened visibly a solar eclipse since 1918. Then we fast forward to, from 2017, seven years to 2024, and you're going to see it again, but it's going to go this way. Whew. Astronomers are flipping out over this because they said it's so rare that many are making plans to, to travel to specific locations in order to get optimal viewing for this experience. Now, let me I'm going to give you a quote from Fox News. Here's what they say. Quote, the day will turn into night across the United States on the 21st of August as the United States will experience its first solar eclipse in decades. On this day, the moon will pass directly between the earth and the sun, casting a shadow on the U.S. that will track from Oregon to South Carolina. Quote, again, this is from Fox News. This will be the first time since 1918 that a total solar eclipse will be visible from the West Coast to the east coast of the United States. The most recent total solar eclipse visible in the U.S. occurred in 1979. So some people are going to get on here and say, oh, well, no, that's not true. This is fake news because there was a solar eclipse in 1979. Guys, yes, but it wasn't. It was only visible across the Pacific Northwest. But this time, again, I believe it's 48 states in the United States. It will be visible, again, from the West Coast to the East Coast. And that has not happened since 1918. Quote, according to the Washington Post, some believe that the two eclipses that are stated to travel across the U.S., what two eclipses? Again, 2017, August, and 2024. They say, quote, this is something that does not happen very often. This is the Washington Post. You know, the ones that has the smear campaign against Donald Trump that everybody says is fake news, but yet they said this. And this is why it is so extraordinary that another solar eclipse will be visible in large portions of the nation just seven years later in 2024. Here we go. You ready for this? Watch this. When you chart the courses of the solar eclipse in August of 2017 on a map, you... And the one in 2024, it actually forms a giant X. And you guys will see this on YouTube, but you guys can't see this on Facebook Live. It forms a giant X right over the center of the United States of America. Now, okay, look at my hands, guys, on Facebook Live. Do you want to know if you was to draw a circle in the center of the X where it's located on the United States of America, it just so happens that the center bullseye dot of the center of the X falls in portions of Kentucky, Illinois, and Missouri. Now you say, well, okay, why is that a big deal? Because it just so, that is the location where there is a fault line that everybody who lives in Kentucky, Illinois and Missouri, are, Arkansas, are very well aware of. It's called the New Madrid Fault Line. Okay, again, this is where this X crosses. Now, now watch this. That's heavy, guys. And a lot of, some of you already knew this, but let me go a little bit deeper. Now you say, now remember I told you, let's go back up here. Let's go back up here to Revelation 6. It talks about 
There will be, the sun will become black as sackcloth hair. The moon turns into blood. Joel chapter 2, the prophet said that before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord, the moon shall be turned to blood and the sun shall be turned into darkness. Now, I told you in the natural that this could absolutely be fulfilled through volcanic eruptions that could cause this. But let's, let's take it to another perspective. I want to show you a rabbinical perspective on what these, uh, what the blood moon or what the blood moon and the sun turning black and black could mean okay if you go to Genesis turn with me to the book of Genesis if you have your Bible with you if you don't you can just listen and follow along I've got it up here but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 again Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 here's what God here's what the word of the Lord says it says and then God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years now somebody say signs and seasons the word signs in Hebrew actually mean, it's a Hebrew word meaning a distinguishing mark, a banner, re, a remembrance, a miraculous sign, a warning, an omen, or an insignia, a token, a standard, or proof. That's for the word signs in Hebrew, Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. So what are the lights in the firmament of the heavens? For what are these things put in? Why did Luke 21, Jesus said, and there shall be great and fearful signs in the heavens. And again, we'll talk about that. Now let's talk about seasons in Hebrews. Modims, meaning seasons. He said these are for signs and seasons. Seasons in Hebrew means an appointed place and an appointed time, a sacred season, a set feast, all right, or an appointed meaning, an appointed sign or signal, okay? So again, that's from Hebrew, from a rabbinical perspective. Now, and you say, well, what does that got to do with the United States of America? I'm glad you asked. From a rabbinical perspective, blood moons falling on Jewish Feast days are an omen, a sign, or an appointed signal to the nation of Israel of prophetic events dealing with them. Now listen, everybody got mad at John Hagee and Rabbi Jonathan Kahn because nothing happened when those things happened. But if, it's all ignorance because if you really study it out, there has been major things that are happening with Israel. Uh, and it may not be uh, what you expected it to be. It didn't mean that the Lord, they never said the Lord was coming back. No, people put that in their mouth and they make them say things they didn't say. And they do this to me too. They'll get. They'll take this video and they'll go on YouTube and tell everybody that Brother Ricky is telling everybody that the Lord's coming back in August of 2017 or something crazy like that when it's never been said. What we're trying to tell you, what prophetic teachers and, and those, uh, the sons of Issachar, those who have discernment of the signs and seasons that are taking place of, uh, in, the, in the times that we're in, we're trying to show you and get your attention that God is speaking if you're listening. But again, blood moons on, on falling on the feast days of Israel are signs to the Jewish people and to the nation of Israel. But solar eclipses, according to rabbinical sources and Jewish traditions, are warnings to Gentile nations of appending signs of judgment, calamities, wars, and famines. To who? Gentile nations. Who's going to be seeing, where is the solar eclipse going to be visible to? The United States of America. Now, here's, now, when I began to study this, when I was putting the research together for this, I, si I was sitting here and I was like, well, Lord, I understand that we're on the Gregorian calendar, the Western calendar, but I know you operate out of your calendar or God's calendar. So I said, I've got, I'm curious and I want to know, what what is taking place on the 21st of August 
which is the day of this solar eclipse that will be that's going to affect uh, America. Well, I looked, nothing significant. But when I pulled up the Hebraic calendar, my I, my eyes could not help but to focus on the 22nd, which is the day after, 24 hours later, on the Jewish calendar, August 21st, this solar eclipse that has not taken place since 1918 will stretch across America, be visible in at least 48 states of America, which is a the leading Gentile nation of the world, America. On the next day, August 22nd, on the Jewish calendar, you ready for this? That day on the Jewish, Jewish calendar begins the first day of Elul on the Hebraic calendar. Now you say, well, I don't even know what you're talking about, brother. What is Elul? I'm glad you asked. Elul is also known as Teshuvah or the month of repentance. Wow. Now let me break this down. The month of repentance or the, 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 the days of Elul actually mean the month of mercy, the month of forgiveness, the month of repentance. Elul follows the two previous months of Tammuz and Av. The months, and again, according to Jewish tradition, the months of tragedies that, had, that were brought upon the Jewish people happened in Tammuz it happened in the ninth of Ab. The ninth of Ab was one of the most negative days on the Jewish calendar ever. And I don't have time to break into it. It would take me at least 30 minutes to go over all the tragedies that took place on the ninth of Ab. Did you know that on June 26, when we legalized same-sex marriage, it actually fell on a, during this time frame of Tammuz, which happened to be the very same time frame that... The invasion took place uh, uh, to the Jewish people. They busted through uh, the, the, uh, the, the temple. They invaded, they breached through the temple mount. And it took place on the very day of the Jewish 26. I don't have this in my notes, but you can go look it up. When they legalized same-sex marriage. Again, all this happened during this time frame. So here we go. Again, let me, let me go on with this, guys. Uh, according to Jewish tradition, these were the days when God revealed to the Jewish people great mercy. This is the time that has been designated as a time or a season of mercy and forgiveness, an opportune time for Tashuvah or time of repentance. In other words, let me make this real plain and simple to you. Whew. Do you think it's coincidence that there is going to be a sign from the heavens that according to rabbinical sources and tradition is an omen or a bad sign to Gentile nations of possible judgment, calamity, and famine. And it's happening the day before we enter into the season of repentance. In other words, guys, I'm, listen, listen, I don't know how to stress this, but if we continue, if God has given us a space to repent, you can go to the book of Revelation. It talks about Jezebel. It says, and you and you have Jezebel, which you tolerate, that's deceiving the prophets, and I've given her a space to repent. I believe, again, America is entering into a dangerous time frame in which God, with his divine mercy, he's, he's raising up watchmen. He's raising up true prophets. Who, and again, uh, those who understand, like the sons of Israel, called the times and seasons of which we're in they are giving and sounding the warning and sounding the alarm and trying to draw the nation back unto repentance and seeking his face and turning back to the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob but let me read on it just so happens listen to this the Torah reading the actual Torah reading in other words the Jews that will be observing the Torah reading the observant Jews that will be observing the Torah reading on the 21st of August, which is when this solar eclipse will be taking place. Let me give you the Torah reading from that day, which is going to be Deuteronomy 17, 14 through 20. Here we go. 
Quote, when you come to the land which the Lord your God has given you and possess it and dwell in it and say, quote, I will set a king over me like all the nations that are around me. You shall surely set a king over you whom the Lord your God chooses. One from among your brethren you shall set as a king over you. You may not set a foreigner over you who is not your brother, but he shall not multiply horses for himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt. Come on, to multiply horses, for the Lord has said to you, you shall not return that way again. In other words, Egypt represents sin, it represents bondage, it represents idolatry, and the Lord says the king that you're going to point over you, you shall not have him point you back to those ways. Golly, go to the book of Genesis, guys. Go to the book of Deuteronomy. Read the, the account of Pharaoh, when Pharaoh rose to power and all this stuff, and, and, and that's, it gets heavy, but watch this. Neither shall he multiply wives for himself, lest his heart turn away, nor shall he greatly multiply silver and gold for himself. Also, it shall be when he sits on the throne of his kingdom that he shall write for himself a copy of this law in a book from the one before the priests, the Levites, and it shall be with him and he shall read it all the days of his life and that he may learn to fear the Lord his God and be careful to observe all the words of this law and these statutes that his heart may not be lifted above his brethren, that he may not turn aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, and that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. Did you catch that? Again, this is a warning to the people, that the king in which they would appoint to themselves that, that he's, he's warning them and saying it, it needs to be addressed, that we've got to pray that this king that we appoint over, come on, some of y'all get this, the king in which you appoint over your nation has to follow the ways of the Lord. You must pray that he not turn his heart back to idolatry, turn back to Egypt, that he would not multiply silver and gold for himself. He would not do these things to, to, to exalt himself. Come on, above his brother. So here's the bottom line, guys. The nation of America, again, this is a warning to America. We have got to, we have got, the Bible says, if my people that are called by my name shall humble them, themselves before the Lord, and, and, and if they should humble themselves and pray and turn from their sins and wicked ways, then shall the Lord hear from heaven and heal their land. So we've got to pray. Number one, we've got to repent. We don't need more, I'm going to say this, we don't need another prayer movement. We need another movement of repentance. We need to be, be repenting of the bloodshed of innocence. We need to be repenting for the endorsement and, and for the, the condoning of abominations in this nation. We need to repent for the sins and abominations and atrocities and idolatries and the, the, just the wickedness of this nation. Okay, number one. Number two, we've got to, and I don't care whether you like him, whether you don't like him, whether you're independent, whether you're Republican, whether you're Democrat, if you live in the United States of America and you're a born again believer, you call yourself a Christian, you better pray for the president of the United States of America, Donald Trump, and you need to pray that his heart is soft, that it's pliable, and that, is, that his focus and his agenda and his, and, and his, that his underlining motive is to serve the Lord, to honor the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that he surrounds himself with people that are that are that love God, that are spirit filled, that can counsel him, that can give him wise counsel. Because again, if his heart turns, see, I know everybody said, oh, and listen, I know I read all these prophecies. Oh, Trump is the Cyrus in which God is raised up for this hour. He's the Cyrus, he's the Cyrus. Now listen, he he could be the Cyrus, but if he begins to get his heart lifted up and full of pride and full of arrogance, and he turns from from serving uh, other individuals and serving God, he could be he could go from a Cyrus to a King Saul. Oh, you didn't hear that? He could easily shift from a Saul, uh, from a Cyrus to a Saul, and this is what bothers me because again, the prophet Samuel. 
The, when he was having a conversation with the Lord, the Lord said that people have desired a king. And the Lord told Samuel, it was never my will. It was not my will for them to have a king. But the people demanded that they'd have a king. So God told Samuel the prophet, give them what they want. Give them the king. But you shall solemnly warn the people that this shall be the heart of the king in which you will get. And the Bible says that Saul started out good good. He started out on a well journey. He started out with the purpose to serve God, but he became lifted up in pride. He became lifted up in arrogance. He became lifted up in self-centeredness and eventually his heart shifted and it became all about him and what made him look good, what, what exalted his kingdom and what made him look again good before the people. God said, he, he said, when you were small in your own eyes and I was with you and blessed you, but now you become great. You become full of arrogance and pride. This is what I am concerned with, with our president. And we've got to pray that it doesn't happen. So this is why I'm telling this, listen to this Southern Kentucky boy preacher. Listen, I don't have a whole, I don't have degrees hanging on the wall. I don't have seminary degrees hanging on the wall. I, I, I may not, you know, be able to roll my R's like they do in seminary and theology and, uh, and hermeneutics and this and that. But what I'm trying to tell you is I do believe I have the spirit of God and I believe I'm a watchman in this hour and I believe that God has given me uh, some discernment and I believe uh, he's put the fear of the Lord in my heart and I'm trying to warn you today that we need to be in prayer for this situation that's happening in Wyoming with the Yellowstone volcano. We need to be in prayer about what's happening in August with this solar eclipse. I do believe it's a warning from God. And I ain't even got into September because there's going to be another celestial event that I don't have time to get into. But, uh, and we'll talk about that later, that I don't believe is a, a lot of people on the internet, there's a lot of buzz on this saying that the rapture is going to happen, the Lord's going to come back. I'm not saying saying all that, what I'm saying is, again, it's more great and fearful signs from heaven, and we need to be paying attention to what's going on. So again, uh, if this is your first time joining me, I want to welcome you guys. Again, I'm Ricky Scaparo, the founder, the pastor, the voice of End Time Headlines. If you've not yet subscribed to us there on Facebook, please go to the comment section, bookmark our site, subscribe to it, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. Uh, you, you will get a one time email every day just one email and it will be our digest of all of our news and headlines from a prophetic perspective where you'll get these messages and you'll get our headlines on our main website as well as, as any other information that we put out there. Also uh, if you guys are on Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, Google Plus uh, please go and follow us there. If you're watching this by Facebook Live, we do have a YouTube channel. You'll see the link there as well. Again, we always want to give you an opportunity to sow into this ministry. If this ministry is a blessing to you, it encourages you, it equips you uh, it, it keeps you aware of the times and seasons in which we're in. For many of you, this is your home church, and we understand that, and we honor that, and, and it's a great honor, and I don't take that lightly, guys, but we ask that you... Uh, uh, it, whatever the Lord puts on your heart, you guys sow into this ministry and the Lord will bless you indeed. And we're going to put up the link uh, for that. We'll put that in the Facebook section. You guys will also see this uh, on the YouTube section as, as well. Now, we do have a physical uh, email or phys yes, physical uh, mailing address. Uh, and we want to give you that. It's End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 2312. And that's Clarksville, Indiana, 47131. Let me say that one more time. Again, our physical mailing address is PO, in time headlines, P.O. Box 2312, Clarksville, Indiana. And that is that zip code there is 47131. So I always appreciate you guys, uh, your letters, your support, your prayers to this ministry as always. Now, guys... Uh, we'll be back on here tomorrow. I'll be back on here tomorrow. Uh, we'll be doing a message that won't be a prophetic message, but it will be an encouraging and edifying message as well. So again, we appreciate you guys taking out the time. Please, uh, 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 if you want to email us, guys, somebody asked our email address. You can email us at, at endtimeheadlines at yahoo.com, or you can just message us on Facebook if you're watching this by Facebook. Uh, if you're watching this by YouTube, again, our email address is in uh, endtimeheadlines at yahoo.com.
gmail.com. So we love you guys. God bless you. Have a good Wednesday, and we'll see you tomorrow.